Muley was the deer we had on the farm, I believe, for seven and a half years. And I had an encounter with him as a three-year-old. Zach had an encounter with him this past fall. And then I let him walk this past gun season. It's pretty nice, I think. I'm Matt Drury, and on this episode of DOD TV, we're linking up with veteran DOD team member John Williams as he's forced to shift his Leupold sights towards another mega rack in Missouri. At my age, I'm 72 years old, um, you know, I passed Muley, and it was probably one of the dumbest decisions I've ever made in my life. Have you ever passed on an opportunity at a giant buck, then found out he was harvested by another hunter? Let us know your story in the comments below, and let's get this show underway. I'm not getting any younger. You know, the next few years, I need to start putting some deer on the ground for myself. And just about when he was getting into an area where I could shoot him, he throws his head up and starts to exit the field just exactly where he came in. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Leopold. Be relentless. We're set up in the blind. We got the boss buck decoy out. We've got four antlers come in the field. It's just a little after four o'clock. Beautiful evening. The first encounter I had with Muley, I believe was in the fall of 2014. Oh, I see. I was using a decoy and he came out in the south field and came right to the decoy. You know, I shot and they do what they do a lot is they duck your arrow and uh, I watched Muley run away. Uh, did it, didn't shoot through him, did it? I couldn't tell. You know, that was basically the only chance we had to kill him until the fall of 2018. We had all kinds of pictures of Muley. He was all over the farm, daylight, dark, it didn't make any difference. Headed out to the farm, it's a little after 3.30. Uh, today is October the 24th. I uh, hunted this morning, it's fairly slow, but uh, it's that time of year, the leaves are changing colors. It's just nice to be out more than anything. I have a lot of good reconnex pictures down here of the deer we're chasing. I had one, I think, last week, last Wednesday or Thursday, of him right at dark coming into this field, so we'll see. I was filming Zach and we were sitting in a muddy ground blind and next thing you know, Zach points up on top of the hill and here comes Muley. There was a doe and a yearling in the field at the same time and you know, I think if Muley would have been by himself, we probably would have killed him that evening. But the next thing you know, he's running down the hill. I had to change filming positions. Zach had to change shooting positions. And to make a long story short, his uh, arrow hit the corner of the muddy ground blind. What happened? So let's fast forward to the afternoons of Sunday, November 11th. And I'm sitting in the Old Faithful Centerfield Shooting House, and lo and behold, who shows up but Muley. I could have shot Muley. 25 times, he was in the field at 40 yards in front of me for 30 minutes. I opted to let Muley walk. I really wanted one of the grandkids to harvest Muley. Anyway, best laid plans of mice and men, and sometimes they don't work, and it didn't that time. 
I passed Muley that Sunday afternoon and on Wednesday, Zach texted me and he had heard a shot on the neighbor and he said, Muley's dead. After I let Muley walk, I've sort of had a come to Jesus moment. I'm not gonna let any more of those big deer get away like that. Fast forward to last October, we had checked deer cast and we had a great forecast coming on deer cast. We're on our way down to our north shooting house and we've got three big deer coming in here. I'm hoping to see something in there tonight. I shot this bow the other day five times at, at 50 yards and I was in an orange every shot. Hopefully if they walk in front of us, the timber's 40 yards in front. So we're on our way down. We're gonna get in and see what we can come up with. We've already had Ambrose in the field, had a couple turkeys come in. We've got a good deer cast and we've got three big deer use in this area. Anyway, we're in here, we're all set up. We're gonna see what happens tonight. I'm looking forward to it. You know, it was a beautiful evening. I'm sitting in there with Isaac. We're just shooting the breeze and saw groundhogs, some turkeys, maybe a doe, and then uh, a couple yearlings popped in the field. And it wasn't very long after they popped in the field, Round Top appeared. It's pretty nice, isn't it? And I told Isaac, I said, I'm gonna take this deer. And I was planning on taking him right out of the front of the shooting house. And that was 35 yards. You know, the two little deer were messing with him, licking around on him and whatever, but he walked down and just about when he was getting into an area where I could shoot him, he just turned and did a 180 and started walking out of the field. You know, it takes a lot to get us excited about, uh, you know, shooting, uh, whether you're shooting a whitetail or shooting at a hog, shooting an antelope, whatever it may be. Uh, here's a VX Freedom Scope from Leupold that has got us really pretty fired up because this fire dot is a lot of features that we would have loved to have had for many years. And most importantly, our mother Lucille loves this scope. Yes. When she looked through it for the first time and I turned that fire dot on, she was like, oh my, oh my goodness, God. I can see it. So a young child, mom, a uh, new shooter, whoever it is, and you can adjust the brightness of it. So that really does help. Uh, with the scope, but it's got a lifetime warranty. I mean, and, and pound for pound, I think Leupold's Freedom Series is the best scope on the market for the money. If you look at everything else out there and what you can buy these particular optics for in that VX Freedom Series, there's nothing else out there that compares with the quality, the lifetime guarantee, everything you get with Freedom, the twilight technology, uh, pound for pound, it's the best scope on the market for the dollar. And it's made in the US of A. Most important part. I had never seen Round Top, and I don't think anybody had ever seen him other than on the camera three or four times. He's kind of out of tension, so. He's trying to smell something. Tell me, tell me when he starts to walk. Okay. He's trying to catch some. And just about when he was getting into an area where I could shoot him, he just turned and did a 180 and started walking out of the field. I grabbed my Leopold range finders and uh, opened the side window real fast and he just locked up at 50 yards. I ranged him and I told Isaac, I said, he's 50 yards and I can make that shot. Get ready. Okay. Smoking. 
Huh? Huh? He just crashed, didn't he? He's down. Huh? He's down. <laughs> He's down. <laughs> I love it. I love it when a plan comes together. Wow. That was 50 yards. <sighs> you can see a tree just painted. That rage brought him does a number on him. They don't know what hit him. You know, I let the crossbow go, made a beautiful, beautiful shot, and he actually died on camera running up the hill. My eyes aren't what they were when I was younger, but it looked to me like we got a direct hit, and I think he crashed right up here on the hillside. So we're gonna go over and see what we can come up with. Oh, there's the deer. Look what that rage broadhead did. I know, the air is right next to him. That would be the entrance hole. It was really satisfying, you know, when I put an arrow in round top, sort of made my season and sort of helped the paint of let Muley walk be a little easier. I had looked at the DeerCast app earlier and, you know, it said it was gonna be a good night and he came in with plenty of daylight left and he was gonna have to come about 20 more steps and I was gonna take him at like 35 yards broadside right there, but he threw his head up in the air and started testing the wind and he got a whiff of something he didn't really like and he just did a 180 and was going right back for the corner that he had just came out of. He stopped at 50 yards, I ranged him at 50, slipped an arrow right in and the Rage Broadhead just tore him up inside. He maybe went 40 yards, 45 yards and crashed and we actually have him uh, going down on camera. It was really a neat hunt. I'm 71 years old. I'm not getting any younger. You know, the next few years I need to start putting some deer on the ground for myself. This will be your season, so make the most of your time in the woods by knowing when whitetails will be moving on your prime spots up to 10 days in advance. And learn how to recover your deer after any shot with our revolutionary track feature. Get ahead of your game with DeerCast, the most advanced whitetail hunting tool ever. We're adding new videos every week, so make sure to click that subscribe button and check out all of our amazing content. This episode of DOD TV was brought to you by Leopold.